Rin from Hallowed Be Thy Game, and today we're going to share with you why we love the Nintendo DS. Let's check it out. Welcome back to another episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game. Ren here, and I am so psyched to have Danik here with me. I'm so psyched to be here again with you. Oh my god, and we are going to be jumping into the Nintendo DS. I love the Nintendo DS. So we've tried shooting this episode a couple times now, and we just find ourselves diving into just why the DS rocks so hard. Uh, we, we're going to be sharing with you a, a DS list in the coming weeks, but we just got to get this out. We got to we gotta share we why. We diverged from the path. Yeah, the plot was lost, and we just we loved it. So we just want to share why the Nintendo DS is kind of, I don't know, it's such an ultra-incredible part of gaming history, and it does feel at this point, unfortunately, a bygone, a bygone era. Agreed. And uh, we just kind of wanted to share our thoughts on that. But before we jump into that, I just want to give a massive thank you to the channel members and patrons. Your support is so incredible. You guys rock. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. It's helping out the channel so much. The growth is just extremely humbling. We just can't thank you enough. Please let us know down in the comments what your favorite memories of the Nintendo DS are. And without further ado, let's get started. So one of the major takeaways from kind of the Nintendo DS we were just talking about and we want to share with you is how easy the DS was to create games for, for third parties. And a big part of that is we kind of feel like we're in this era where it's five, six, seven, ten years between sequels, millions and millions of dollars, corporations live or die on some of these releases. But back in the DS, it felt like, I mean, just to, not to zero in on Atlas, but how many Etrian Odyssey games did we get on the DS? How many SMT games? And it's kind of at this point where the DS just seemed like it was the perfect tech and it was easy enough to develop for. It was a bounty of games released for it. A bounty. Yeah. It, just it, it, We had so many unique franchises, ideas, just because I think it allowed this level of creativity yeah. while not requiring a nine-figure budget yeah. just to get off the floor. Yeah. And you could, and you didn't need a thousand employees and to outsource to five different countries to get this 3D yeah. work done, this 2D art drawn, right. and it's the balloon that we find right. ourselves in today. Well, I'm finding myself gravitating so much more to like smaller studios. I'm not an exclusive indie game player. Sure. I, I, you know, I still love my big releases like you know the Persona series, Final Fantasy. I still love those. But, you know, you do see a lot of instances where a single person will create a game and it will have not jaw-dropping graphics, it won't have glorious voice acting or anything like that, but it will be a runaway hit with people just because at the core of it is a fun game. Vampire Survivors is a recent yeah. great example of yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like whoever created Vampire Survivors is kind of like embodies the soul of what made the DS so great is that it was just simple ideas, fun ideas, but then you would have these just wild and weird, weird ex like experimenting going on with the DS. Like I remember having to blow on the screen with like Zelda games yep. or like using like it was the first time I ever played like a rhythm game. Um, you've even talked about like how they would experiment with how you even hold the handheld itself. Yep. Yeah. And it's just fascinating everything that could happen with the DS. And I am literally constantly finding out about new DS games like Glory of Heracles. Um, just this incredible, beautiful graphics and art style. I love the anime aesthetic to it. The combat system is simple. You have a heartfelt story. And just that that era of graphics, like when we look at games like Dementium the War or stuff like that, it's just that era and time of graphics is just nostalgia to me. We were looking at the Vagrant story weirdly just the yeah. other day and just like that late PlayStation 1 graphic, just something about it. I mean, yeah. maybe it's our age, nostalgia, all of these things. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to try to like do a dissertation to explain why it's actually anything other than what it Absolutely. is. And it is nostalgia. But at the same time, it was an era of graphics that is 
it has art to it. It has an art style. It has personality. It has personality, and it conveys what needs to happen. It's you know, it's definitely more than like early, you know, PS One games. Mm -hmm. But just like, and, and a big thing for me is like with SMT Four and like and such on the 3DS. That PS One Point Five late PS One era of graphics is just excellent to me. And what we see with games like Ghost Trick, Ghost Trick's yeah. so weird. Like and if you, you never got a sequel. Yeah. It was one and done on the DS. And nowadays, I hear it talked about with glowing recommendations and just so much love went into. Could you just describe the game? If to you've me? never played Ghost Trick, you, uh, it's made by uh, some people who are involved with also the Phoenix Wright series, oh, and they excellent. they spun off. That and, explains the art style. It does. Okay. And they spun off and done this uh, DS game called Ghost Trick: Phantom Detective. You are Sissel, I think his name was, and like you're dead. You, yeah. The game begins and you're dead. And he's you're his dead soul trying to figure out what, what killed him, how he died. And like you use the DS, top and bottom screen makes one scene. Yeah. And you touch screen, navigate like his soul through objects in the background. And it has this really, really, really good pixel art. Yeah. You've probably seen the guy in the big white coat doing kind of Michael Jackson yeah. dancing before yeah. from that game. And the art of the game is really good. It was just a really cool idea. Yeah. And it just permeates this narrative yeah. of his dead soul figuring out what happens. Yeah. Well, and I'm not going to say that we've never had fun, inventive games since the DS. Sure. But I just think that the DS was like the wild west of just third party or like passion projects. I, the John Madden team made Henry Hatsworth in the puzzling adventure Dude. just off yeah. like how many people were allowed to not make Madden to I go know. make this weird I, exactly. platforming Tetris yeah. DS game. Yeah, and I don't um I don't know if you know this. You remember the uh, Jay from Square Pegs who challenged yeah. us to uh, do the games we keep coming back to. He was a dev what? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. So huge shout Big out. shout to, out. Yeah. That was a weird game. Yeah, it's fantastic. How are you allowed to not make Madden and make that game? I, yeah, Let me seriously. know. <laughs> um, but then you have games like Wizard of Oz Beyond the Yellow yes. Road. What and, a weird game. Okay, I remember playing World of Warcraft and finding out that one of the raid members who was struggling with was uh, playing with a trackball. And uh, <laughs> that, that was a pretty funny time. But anyways, I say that to say... Wizard of Oz Beyond the Touch screen trackable. Yes! Uh, why? why? What? But you know what's weird? Is if you would have told me, yeah, I want to make a turn based Uber anime JRPG off of the Wizard of Oz, I mean, like, what's, what sort of peyote you been on, you know? And then you're like, but that's not all. Yeah. And How I, you're going to move around the world with, with a, a touch screen trackball. And it's so weird. And I love it. I yeah, love it. You can't, you can't argue that that's not unique. Yeah, and I mean, it's just excellent. It is just this wonderland of unique games, and it. I think that just is the embodies the spirit of games. Is like I have a weird idea, but it's my idea. It's a passionate idea, and it felt less like the giant shareholders that seem to kind of mute everything down these, these days because they probably require. This crazy budget to yeah. get off the off the floor, and well, it stinks. I think you've kind of bemoaned the fact that uh, when games used to still be like not cool, like it, like when games weren't cool, when, when they weren't like uber mainstream to where you have like billions of dollars, yeah. like doing so many metrics and studies to out. Because my thing is, is I think a potential death to creativity in games is when you start to algorithm everything. You know, and you can oh, see there. it in movies too. Yeah. But I feel like the DS in particular was just a void of that. It was. It because was. Because it sold, the DS, as I mean, sold an unbelievable amount of units. And we just had this bastion of ideas and yeah. companies to try something. And it was before, like, this boon of indie games that probably came about the end of its life cycle. Right. Like, I personally. The indie game boon kind of begins with Cave Story and Super yeah. Meat Boy to right, me right. about that era. Yeah, that's probably about when the DS was like. I still need to play Cave Story too. It's excellent. Yeah, and well, up to your point as one dude. Right. Really. However long ago now. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong. He since sold it and hopefully made a whole bunch well, of yeah, money, but right. but then okay, so you took the DS and you had 
they wanted to port Resident Evil to it. The first Resident Evil. Right. This is I just realized. Yeah, this. so they yeah. make Resident Evil 1 port. No way. You ever heard of Resident Evil port? Yeah. For, for the DS. Yeah. Full remake of the PlayStation 1 DualShock Edition. But then they added this whole mode where you could knife zombies with the touch screen. That's so like cool. well, okay, cool. Yeah, that's you so could cool. it had like an original mode right. and, and the like right. you could switch. But yeah, there yeah. was this whole little mini game with touch screen. Yeah. And you and I think yeah. like you could blow into the microphone to do something on it too. Well, and you know, I think Nintendo one thing I, I really appreciate is, you know, now that I'm a father, I really appreciate Nintendo's kind of used to when they design their handhelds take into the fact children would be holding them for sure the form factor of the ds light that thing's a friggin tank man. tank i mean in the sense that it can take an absurd beating you know and i loved the clamshell shutting of it i mean you have a game boy advance player there you have a ds like peak gaming to a For kid. Sure. I mean, you have a universe, you have a cosmos of adventures in your hand. And what I remember, I remember getting the DS, and I wasn't like uber young when the DS came out, but I remember getting it and feeling like a kid again, like, oh my God, the adventures. Like, DS Chrono Trigger, I cannot tell you. That that summer, to me, uh, I just remember sitting in my bed, the windows down, listening to the crickets outside, and playing by that glorious, ever-gloving glow of Chrono Trigger on the DS. Perfect. It, it's perfect. And then, you know, you shut that sucker and you chuck it at the end of the bed, you go to sleep, who cares where it's at when you wake up? The battery's still going to be gonna alive be and it's not going to be in any the, trouble. It was just, it was excellent. It was just like, it was for gamers, you know? And yeah. It was, I, I will never get over. And I want the clamshell to come back somehow. If you have the Steam Deck, which everybody's all like awesome for right now, and it's great, taking a, a lot of notes from the Wii U's gamepad, I kind of wish in some way we could have that dual screen clamshell come back. Me too. I love the Switch to death, but you know, like, I, I can't treat it like I would a DS, you know? There was also, like, for me and the DS, there was a time period, like, Amazon kind of... I, I don't know if they had recently started selling video games at this point in time, but okay. I became aware. And they would have a daily deal on video games. Right. You know, kind of not on, like, their lightning right. deals these days. Right. But they were... This was, like, right at the peak of the DS for me. Like, I'd play World of Warcraft, and then, boom, just right into right. the DS. Right. And then they were selling, like, overstocked games for rock bottom price back in the really? day and i got like magical star sign uh mega man zx Jeez. i got elite beat agents rock which bottom. which i love right. at the at this point i was just able to get so many games so cheap right there was everything that i could every genre i could did you ever play bengai of spirits oh what dude, a weird, you showed me that game what oh, a weird God. like I'm so Puzzle, sad I missed Mac, that one. Yeah. Action game. Super That's weird. weird. That's weird. such a cool game. Yeah. And then there was Elite Beat Agents. There was the Japanese version. Hotel there was Dusk. Hotel Dusk, yeah. which was my first real... Okay, so virtual... I didn't get into visual novels. I didn't even know they were a thing. Right. Until Phoenix Wright Trilogy shows yeah. up. Which, again, to sequels, that got one, two, three. Yeah. Apollo Justice. Edgeworth got two spinoffs. Really? The Apollo Justice. It's just crazy yeah. how many right. sequels to this Phoenix right. Wright. And now... I don't know. Right. But... I'm just rambling. No, dude. No. <laughs> but there was so much on the DS, yeah. dude. But with those Amazon deals, man, I mean, I was just constantly had things to play. Yeah. yeah. Constantly. I vaguely, re I don't know if this is like one of those false memories. I could have swore there was a time you'd have to pay sales tax. On. I swear you did. But you did. Uh, at least where we live. Yeah, but we're definitely rambling now. But, but there, I'm on. I also, you know, there was the GBA port. I played Final Fantasy. Dawn of Souls off yeah. of it. Then I played Final Fantasy 3 on the DS. Yeah. It was a bastion for Final oh, Fantasy. Yeah. You had the so Chocobo cool. Racing, the Revenant Wings, Final Fantasy Final, 12 sequel. Yeah, Final How Fantasy weird. 4. Uh, the, I remember the scene the, the CG 3D cut. Yeah. Yes. Dude. They were, those CG cutscenes just... And then you mentioned Chrono Trigger if you were into Square games. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, there was the weird... Chrono Trigger on DS is peak JRPG. Yeah. Like, it's and so you had Contact cool. by Atlas where you're the little boy and the alien ships are coming. Are Series, it's, I haven't, I haven't heard it was a, like kind of earthbound looking, That's but so there was just 
so many games right. for this thing. Oh, man. And we have so much we want to talk about. We're going to go ahead and wrap this video up, but we're going to have more DS content coming in the future. Danny, thanks so much for joining me. Anytime. And I cannot wait to see your memories of the Nintendo DS down in the comments. Please share. It is just so fun to reminisce and dive into DS content. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much to the channel members and patrons. Again, your support is so excellent. Thank you so much. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit that notification bell for more DS content. And until then, we'll see you all next time.